Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. And it is finally opening day for this 2046 baseball season. And uh, we've got high expectations for our Buffalo Wings. We are the two-time defending World Series champions. And uh, our owner has high expectations for us this year as well. All our uh, new owner, Chris Ames, who took over uh, about a year and a half ago, expects from us this season is to win it all and complete the three-peat. We did just complete a trade. Uh, you may remember that we had uh, waived and DFA'd Nate Ruckel, former stopper and longtime reliever for our team. Uh, just don't think he's got it anymore based on his scouting report. His stuff is now below average for a major leaguer, and he's lost several miles an hour off of his pitches over the last uh, eight or nine months. So uh, we moved on from him. He had a $2 million contract. Nobody picked him up when we waved and DFA'd him, which wasn't shocking. Uh, but then after he had made it through waivers, uh, we tried to put him onto our AAA roster, and he continued to refuse the assignment. So we shopped him at that point, and although Houston didn't pick him up when they could have just picked him up, uh, they gave us a very tiny bit of cash, 70000 and a minor league reliever, Jeff Waters. Um, doesn't look like he's anything but organizational depth, but better to get something than nothing for him. As I mentioned, uh, we've got high expectations this year, and we do have almost $8 million uh, available to take on some more contracts if uh, we have some injuries. Knock on wood, hopefully we won't have any serious ones at least. I'm sure we'll have some injuries, but if there's holes we need to fill on the team because of injuries or ineffectiveness, we will have some cash to help with that. Take a look here. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've got high expectations. I think that this team on paper could be the strongest team that we've ever had. So we'll take a look at what the expectations are and yeah, expectations are pretty high. 111 win team through this simulation. Uh, 23 better than the Expos in the National League East. And 11 better than the Giants for the best record in all of baseball, and including the National League, obviously. Uh, we look at the potential top pitchers. Floyd Eclair expected to have another outstanding season as a stopper, at least through this simulation. And the rookie, Danny Black, who would love it if he went 18-6 and six with a 3.30 ERA. That would be incredible. And it looks like, at least in this simulation, the youth movement has really come to Buffalo. Uh, Jim Riker, who missed more than half of his rookie year last year with injuries, expected to have a monster season. And then Arturo Casares, who all he did last year was... Uh, come up in the playoffs and win an NLCS MVP award for us without any major league experience. Expected to have a monster season in his uh, rookie of the year. I'm guessing if he really has uh, 43 homers and 127 ribbies this year, he'll probably be rookie of the year. And we haven't had a lot of wings over the year hit 40 home runs in a season, so it would be cool for Casares to do that. I know that uh, many of our viewers have been watching this uh, series consistently over the last 10 months or so through closing in on 250 episodes. And I'm willing to bet that even the most loyal viewers probably can't name the top three home run hitters in a single season in Buffalo Wings history. Uh, as I mentioned, there's three players who have over 40 homers in a season, and uh, two of them, I think most of you who are pretty loyal viewers will get. One is a little trickier. I'm going to give the answer shortly, so if you want to think about it a bit more, it might be a good time to pause and ponder. So we've signed a number of big free agents over the years who are home run hitters. Shoei Otani, Shamar Jenneret, Daniel Rojas. 
We've had some good talent that's come up through our system as far as hitters. Jace Barofin, Vance Honeycutt, Mike Heiner come to mind. And then we've made trades for some players who have had some pretty big offensive seasons for us as well. Bobby Bolig, Juan Romero, Luis Coma Duran. I'm sure I'm uh, forgetting some names that have had uh, really big seasons for us. And uh, a couple of those players that I mentioned are on the list of top home run hitters in a single season in Buffalo Wings history. Uh, but one of them I haven't mentioned, and that's the one that I think will surprise some of you because he was a very controversial uh, player with some of the viewers over the time. Shamar Jenneret, 44 homers in his 2035 season when he won NL MVP. That's not a surprise. Juan Romero, who we picked up in a trade with Atlanta and had some big years for us uh, before we moved on from him a couple of seasons ago, he had 41 in 2041. And then Samuel Basalo, who uh, was probably one of the least popular players with viewers in the history of this playthrough. Uh, 41 home runs back in 2030. I eventually soured on Basalo a bit as well. But he is a guy who had over 100 ribbies his first three seasons with us. And uh, you can see five years with Buffalo, 34, 29, 41, 31, and 21 homers. Uh, it's just that uh struggled to make contact, especially towards the end of his career, and uh, struck out a significant amount in his career. But... His 162-game averages are still pretty impressive. 34 homers and 100 ribbies over ever 162 games he played in the majors. And he did have that magical 41-home run season uh, with us in 2025. Uh, rookie of or 2030, sorry. Uh, he was a rookie of the year in 28 and all-star in 29 and 30. And he won Silver Slugger Awards each of his uh, first three seasons in the majors. So uh, Basalo, still one of only three Buffalo Wings with over 40 homers. And I would hope that uh, in the coming years, players like Casares and Riker in particular could be uh, joining that list. Also kind of interesting to see that Shamar Jenneret was only with us for three full years and uh, he led the league in ribbies in each of those three years. And those are the three most productive RBI seasons in the history of our franchise. But, but enough with the history lessons. Um, it is time for the start of this season and the beginning of our pursuit of a repeat. And as has become our annual tradition, we're going to play out opening day 2046 right now. And as we get ready to play on opening day, uh, a bit of a change from previous years. It seems like we've had a fair amount of road games on opening day in recent years. Uh, but as the defending world champions, nice to be at home against the Pirates here on opening day 2046. And you can see matchup-wise, our uh, impressive team looks like we should be pretty dominant. Uh, we are going against a left-hander, Greg Confino. Uh, so a couple of uh, quirks in the lineup, uh, Jamari Habersham, who's actually a left-handed hitter, uh, is our leadoff hitter against lefties. And uh, Juan Palomo, the young shortstop who's going to be a utility infielder for us this year, is going to be our starting shortstop against left-handed pitching. Um, Essien, who we invested a lot in last year, and... Uh, Got very little return for on the field, although, as I mentioned, we're defending World Series champs, so we still uh, won without him, but he'll be our starting shortstop against right-handed pitching, uh, so he'll be getting most of the playing time, but we get to see Palomo in the lineup today, and Reichert hits third against lefties, Casara is fourth against lefties. Uh, we have those two flip-flopped in the batting order against... Uh, Right-handed pitching, and Reichert's our first baseman against righties, but he's our DH against uh, lefties, as we think that Habersham is a bit better defensively than he is. So we will see 
if we can get this title defense and this 2046 season off to a good start here today. Our ace, who we've locked up with a long-term contract, is on the mound. And Jim Lance will get things started. One-two count to the Pirates' leadoff hitter here. And he strikes him out to start off the game, so that is positive. Going up against Jesus Salinas, the second baseman right now. Full count to Salinas. And another strikeout by Jim Lance. So he is fired up, it seems, having missed out on the Cy Young Award a year ago and going to do everything in his power to get it this year. Rogelio Moreno, a 1-0 count to the number three hitter. And he grounds out 5-3 to three to end the inning. So a nice start in the field and on the mound for the Buffalo Wings. And we head to the bottom of the first. And Jamari Habersham leading off for us. Weird to not uh, be saying Deshaun Seifu leading off for us. But Habersham does his best uh, impression of Deshaun Seifu going the opposite way there with a double to lead off the game so he is in scoring position now for josh porter the left fielder we'll let porter swing away here and porter will fly out to right i never understand in real baseball and ootp baseball while the runner always takes three or four steps in that direction rather than just in the you know less than one percent chance that the uh fielder's going to butcher an easy pop-up rather than just uh, staying on second or whatever base they're on from the start and uh, giving themselves a better chance of potentially tagging up, but was not to be the case here. Jim Reichert now up, 1-1 one, one count to the young first baseman, and Reichert flies out to left field for the second out of the inning, so Arturo Casar is making his regular season Major League debut here. I'm going to let him swing away. 1-1 one, one count to Casares. And Arturo Casares, uh, who we mentioned in the playoffs last year, came up and won a National League Championship Series MVP with an opposite field home run in his first official Major League bat two-run home run for Arturo Casares. Uh, we mentioned earlier that he was projected to have a big year for us, and uh, he's on his way to that with a two-run homer in his first at-bat. Ramiro Medina flies out to center to end the inning, but 2 nothing lead for Buffalo as we head to the top of the second. Jim Lance going up against Josh Klingsporn strikes him out for his third strikeout of the game. Luis Olmo now up, full count to Olmo, and he also strikes out. So Jim Lance has his good stuff thus far today. David Barreto now, the number six hitter, grounds out. Oh, should have been a ground out, six to three. It looks like uh, the first baseman butchered it. So that should be an error on Habersham. So a runner on second now with two outs. We'll go after Juan Castro and gets him four to three. So they left a runner on base after the error, but still a two nothing lead for us as we head to the bottom of the second. Juan Palomo, the young shortstop, making his major league debut also. 1-0 count to Palomo, and Palomo with an extra base hit in his first major league at bat, a stand-up double. So uh, the youngsters are showing us something here in the early stages of this game. Third baseman Danny Ferguson now up with a runner on second, and he draws a walk to put runners on first and second now with no outs. Catcher Juan Ramirez up, 2-1 count to Mr. Ramirez. And he grounds out 4-6-3 into the double play. So Palomo moves to third, uh, but we now need our center fielder, number nine hitter, Ishmael Velasco, to come through here 
Velasco is our leadoff hitter against right-handed pitching. Have him in the nine hole against left-handed pitching. Grounds out to the right side of the infield, and the inning is over. Heading to the third, Jim Lance going up against their catcher, number eight hitter Steve Patton, 0-1 count to Patton. And he delivers the first hit of the day for the Pirates, a single to center field. Going after the number nine hitter now. And fifth strikeout of the day, Jim Lance gets Luimi Gano back to the top of the lineup in the third baseman, Arroyo. That ball got by the catcher, but Ramirez got to it quickly. The runner cannot advance. Steve Patton does not have a lot of speed. We'll still go after Arroyo here with a 1-2 count. And another strikeout for Lance. Ramirez, the catcher, uses his defensive ability. Great job framing that pitch. Two outs now to Juan Salinas. And another strikeout. So Lance strikes out the side. Seven strikeouts through the first three innings for the Buffalo Ace. Jamari Habersham, the leadoff hitter, back up here in the bottom of the third. And that's an old can of corn to the shortstop. Josh Porter now up. 1-1 one, one count to Porter. And he beats it out. Infield single for Josh Porter. So a runner on base now for Riker. Porter does have decent speed. We're going to have Riker take a pitch here. They are throwing over to Porter. We'll have Riker take another pitch. Right down the middle. We're going to go ahead and try to steal with Josh Porter here. Put some pressure on the Pirates. And the first stolen base of the season for Josh Porter is successful. So a 1-1 count to Reichert now and a runner in scoring position. We'll let him swing away now here. Full count. And another big high pop-up to the shortstop for out number two. Arturo Casares, who hit the two-run home run in his first major league regular season at bat last time up another runner in scoring position here one two count to casares and he strikes out so we head to the top of the fourth buffalo two pittsburgh one actually it's buffalo two pittsburgh zero i don't know why i said one hopefully it's not a bad omen for what's going to happen here in the top of the fourth Going after the number three hitter, Rogelio Moreno. And he flies out to center, swinging on the first pitch. Cleanup hitter, Josh Klingsporn up. One two count to Klingsporn. And Lance with his eighth strikeout on this opening day evening in Buffalo. Luis Olmo now up. Two two count to Olmo. And Olmo gives that one a ride, and it is gone. So uh, perhaps I was prescient when I said the score was 2-1 to one at the start of this inning because it is 2-1 to one now, and very bad news. <laughs> Jim Lance injured on the play, trainer examining his right arm, and they have to take him out of the game. So uh, gave up a home run and a pretty... Potentially serious injury. Who knows? Yeah. At least it's not one that we're waiting on, but a bicep strain for Jim Lance. He's going to be out for six weeks. We've got great pitching, um, so certainly not the end of the world. But uh, a year after we felt he was ripped off in the Cy Young Award voting, uh, missing six weeks, going to be real tough for him to earn a first Cy Young Award this season. And uh, he was certainly pitching very well with eight strikeouts over his first three and two-thirds innings of the season. But we'll see Lance again, hopefully, in late May. Uh, we will make a call to the bullpen now. 
And we will go with the youngster, Solano Toselli. Left-handed pitcher. Uh, they've got a lefty and a switch hitter coming up. Toselli is a guy who was an international free agent signing back in 2038. 26 years old now. He's been, um, it took him a while to kind of get developing. He's been in Albany for the last couple of years. Uh, he's basically the guy who took the uh, spot as a lefty out of our bullpen when we decided to move on from Nate Ruckel. So we'll uh, put Toselli in here in a spot and uh, see if he can get an out for us and get us into the fifth inning. And a pop up to the catcher for the final out of the inning. Um, so we head to the bottom of the fourth with a two to one lead and we'll see what Toselli can do next inning. Uh, Ramiro Medina now up, a uh, much closer game now. They've cut the deficit in half. And that was not the most well simulated play there, but it ended up being a ground out to Medina. I was wondering what was going on there. Juan Palomo now up, got to hit his first major league at bat. And he grounds out three unassisted for the second out of the inning. Danny Ferguson, the third baseman, now up. One, two count to Danny. And Ferguson gives that one a ride. A stand-up double for Danny Ferguson with two outs. And it looks like Ferguson was injured, but not serious, and he can remain in the game. Don't need any more injuries here today. Juan Ramirez now up. 2-2 two -two count to our catcher. And Ramirez delivers a big RBI double. Yeah, it really was an RBI single, and he took second base on the throw, but uh, opens up the lead to two runs again. And we still have a runner in uh, scoring position for Ishmael Velasco here, the number nine hitter. 0-1 count to our center fielder. And Velasco, diving catch by the left fielder to finish the inning. But we do get a run, and we've got a 3-1 to one lead as we head to the fifth. See what Toselli can do here against the bottom of the order. Juan Castro. Oof, I don't know. That might be an error on the third baseman. Uh, looks like they're calling it a double. Tough play for him to make, but uh, Toselli gives up the leadoff double to Castro here. Going after the catcher, Steve Patton now. Strikes him out for the first out of the inning. Toselli now going after Luimi Gano. 2-2 two -two count to the shortstop. And he pops up to third for the second out of the inning. Arturo Arroyo back to the top of the order. And Arroyo gets plunked on a 3-2 pitch. So runners on first and second now for Jesus Salinas. And goes 6-4 to four to get the force and get out of the inning. So heading to the bottom of the fifth, three to one lead for Buffalo, back to the top of the order for the third time today for the Buffalo Wings. Jamari Habersham up, one two count to the young first baseman slash outfielder. And don't know whether that was an error or not, but uh, we'll see how they rule it. Stand up double, I guess I uh, just could not track it down. So a fair amount of extra base hits thus far today for the Buffalo Wings. Josh Porter now up with a runner in scoring position. 2-2 two -two count to the outfielder. And the ball got away. A wild pitch. Habersham goes to third. And the count is full here to Porter. We'll still let him swing away. And Porter drives that one out to left. We are going to tag. 
and we score. So uh, got the run in. So that gives us a 4-1 to lead. Sacrifice fly for Porter there. And nobody on base now for Riker. 1-0 count to the young first baseman. And Reichert flies out to right field. Arturo Casara is now up. 1-2 count to the young outfielder. And Casara is another hit. He homered earlier, and uh, he's trying to leg this one into a triple. So Arturo Casara is having quite an impressive debut. Two-run home run and a triple, and it's only the fifth inning. Ramiro Medina now up with the runner on third. Full count to the second baseman. And he draws a walk. And they finally made a call to the bullpen for the right-handed pitcher, Steve Wiley. And we've got the young shortstop, Juan Palomo, up. Who did have a double earlier today. Don't know whether we should pinch hit for him or not. I would hope that a 4-1 to lead will be sufficient with our bullpen. But every run does matter. Feel like we should play things straight up. So we are going to pinch hit with the left-handed hitter Tim Boston right now for Palomo, see if we can really break this game open against the reliever with two runners on and two outs. And he grounds out 4-3 to three to end the inning. So we do get another run. We've got a 4-1 to one lead. Uh, used Boston as a pinch hitter. Um, could have used Essien since he's also a left-handed hitter, but thought that Boston was more likely to hit us a home run um, and Essien is our best defensive shortstop so intended to have him in the game anyways. Toselli still on the mound uh, got a couple of lefties up in Ramiro and Kingsborn so if he gets the two of them um, depending on how tired he is uh, might give him a chance at the righty but if anybody gets on likely will make a call to the bullpen. Three unassisted, ground out for the first out of the inning. Going up against the other lefty, the cleanup hitter, Josh Klingsporn. 1-1 one, one count to Klingsporn. And he uh, crushes that one. Another solo home run given up. Klingsporn with his first home run of the season. That cuts the deficit, to uh, cuts our lead to 4-2. to two. And uh, we will make a call to the bullpen now for Mr. Toselli. And we will go to the Rule 5 acquisition, Lazaro Savonarola. Bring him in as the new pitcher. See what all of these guys who are new to our team can do here today. Um, going up against Luis Olmo. Savonarola. walks him so the tying run is at the plate in the form of the left-handed hitting david barreto go ahead and pitch to him 2-2 two -two count and uh, grounder back to first go 1-6 to get the force uh, but can't get a double play barreto does have some speed but with two outs we're just going to go after the batter juan castro the switch hitting center fielder Nice block by Ramirez on a pitch in the dirt. 1-0 count, now a 2-0 count to Castro. And he laces that one down the right field line for a single. Runners on the corners now with two outs here. So the uh, go-ahead run at the plate in the form of Steve Patton here, the catcher. We'll see if Savonarola can get out of this jam. And the ball gets past the catcher. Uh past ball so runner on second now and the lead is only four to three two one count from Savonarola to Patton mercifully 
third baseman Ferguson makes the play 5-3 to three and we get out of the inning. But uh, only a one-run lead at this point, 4-3 to three as we head to the bottom of the sixth. So with just a one-run lead now here in the bottom of the sixth, uh, we've got the bottom of our order up, Ferguson, Ramirez, and Velasco. Ferguson going against the right-handed pitching Wiley here. And he strikes out. Ramirez, the catcher, full count. And Ramirez flies out to center field. Ishmael Velasco, don't mind having him here because he's much more effective against uh, right-handed pitchers than lefties. Full count. And he draws a walk. And that gets us to the first baseman, Habersham. Pretty good contact hitter. Um, we will see what he can do against Steve Wiley. 1-1 one, one count. And he grounds out 6-4. to four. They get the force at second. So a runner left for Buffalo, or actually, I guess uh, they got the lead runner there. Um, so a 4-3 to three lead for Buffalo as we head to the 7th. Sabanarola threw 22 pitches. Um, it wasn't the cleanest outing for him in his debut. And uh, we're going to make another call to the bullpen here. And we're going to bring on uh, the right-hander, Simeon Minelli, number five starter the last few years, has moved to our bullpen. But he will be moving back into the rotation uh, in game six of the season. So we'll see if we can uh, get a couple innings out of him today uh, before we put Lance on the IL after the game. And then Minelli... Or I guess, in theory, Chris Lott, uh, one of those two, will end up back in the starting rotation for uh, the next month and a half or so. So Minnelli going up against the shortstop, Luini Gano, full count to Gano. And grounds out one to three. Back to the top of the order in Arturo Arroyo. And a nice diving catch by the youngster Casares there to make the play in right field. Two outs now. Jesus Salinas up. 0-1 count. And Salinas flies out to center field. So headed to the seventh inning stretch with a 4-3 lead for the Buffalo Wings. Josh Porter up against Steve Wiley here. 0 1 count to Porter. And Porter comes through with a hit. And that looks like that could be another extra base hit. Another double for the Buffalo Wings here. So a good start to the inning for Porter. And we've got our three and four hitters up in Riker and Casares with a runner in scoring position and no outs. But certainly we. Certainly we hope that we come out of this inning with an expanded lead. 3-1 count to Riker. And he draws a walk, puts runners on first and second. Do we try to put some pressure on them with the sending both runners? Uh, I don't know if they would be smart enough to try to get Riker at second. I'd say with no outs, uh, we're just going to let Casares swing away. 0-1 count to Casares. And he delivers a single to load the bases. So Casares, with all the doubles we've had, uh, just happens that Casares in his Major League debut is now a double away from hitting for the cycle. 3-4 for four on the day. And Ramiro Medina up with the bases loaded. Full count to Medina. And he laces a single to right field. Uh, base is still loaded. Didn't go too deep into the outfield, but a run for Buffalo and a 5-3 lead. And we still have the bases loaded with 
nobody out. They make a call to the bullpen for the left-handed pitching Wilfredo Zamora. In theory, we could pinch hit for Essien because we still have the utility infielder Mike Whitehead on the bench who could play short and pinch hit for him. Uh, but Essien, we're going to see uh, what the veteran can do here. 0-2 count facing Zamora. And Essien comes through. And that will uh, score two runs, a two-run double by Damani Essien. Gives us a 7-3 lead. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. Ferguson up with a couple runners in scoring position. And he draws a walk with a 3-0 count to load the bases back up. The catcher, Juan Ramirez, now up. Full count to Ramirez. And they get the lead runner for the first out of the inning. Unable to turn the double play, though, so the bases are still loaded for Ishmael Velasco. 2 2 count to Velasco, who strikes out for the second out of the inning. And now. Mr. Habersham. And Habersham flies out to center field to end the inning. So three runs on four hits to extend the lead to 7-3. to three. Uh, Minnelli's thrown just 13 pitches, so we'll keep him on the mound. 1-0 count to Moreno, who comes through, and that looks like extra bases. A... Uh, Thought it was going to be a stand-up double, but uh, ends up being just a double. But the leadoff hitter on board for Pittsburgh here. And the cleanup hitter, Josh Klingsporn, up. And Klingsporn flies out to center for the first out of the inning. Luis Olmo, the DH up, and he strikes out. Takes a strike on the outside corner. David Barreto now up, runner on second, two outs. And Barreto does not make the play. Infield single by uh, Barreto. So runners on the corners now for the left-handed hitting, or actually the switch hitting, Juan Castro, who's batting left-handed against Minnelli here. And we're going to make another call to the bullpen. Go to our lefty specialist, Kevin Hale. Puts Castro back over to the right side. And he gets a grounder, 6-4 to four to get out of the inning. So a 7-3 lead as we head to the bottom of the 8th. Josh Porter, the left fielder, leading off against Zamora. And he flies out to center for the first out of the inning. Jim Reichert now up. Reichert hitless today on the first day of the season. And no longer hitless with a single here in the bottom of the eighth. And now Arturo Casares, as we talked about, Spent all of last year in the minors, but we thought he was good enough to help us in the postseason, so we brought him up. And as I mentioned, he was the NLCS MVP and part of a world championship team. Three for four with a homer and two ribbies here, making his major league debut today. And he is a double away from hitting for the cycle in the first game of his major league career. Going up against the right-handed reliever, Mauricio Velarde, who just came on for the Pirates. And Arturo Casares flies out to right. So the dream of uh, hitting for the cycle in the first game of his career may be just that, a dream. Uh, Ramiro Medina now up, the second baseman. 
ball gets by the catcher, but Riker unable to advance. 1-1 one, one count to Medina. Now a 3-1 count to Medina, and he draws a walk. So runners on first and second now for the shortstop, Damani Essien. 0-1 oh, count to Essien. And he pops that one up to third to end the inning. So a 7-3 lead for Buffalo. As we head to the ninth, we are four outs away. Uh, Kevin Hale threw just one pitch last inning. But we will um, bring on another reliever here. And we will go to Chris Lott. See if the right-hander can get the final three outs for us. As I mentioned, either him or Manelli will be going into the rotation. So it um, doesn't hurt to pitch them both today, um, given that we've already pitched Manelli. But I may, I'm may starting to think more that Lott may be the one who goes into the rotation for Lance. And if that's the case, uh, he won't be pitching again until the sixth game of the season. Um Unless we have an off day, and I'm not really sure if we do or not. So Lott going against Patton here, 2-2 two -two count. Strikes him out. Pinch hitter Edgar Aldana, pinch hitting for the number nine hitter, the shortstop. And he... Oh, that was just a huge high pop-up into the infield. I thought it was a grounder towards second base. The animation on that one had me fooled. Uh, but two outs now on six pitches for Lance, or for Lott. I wish Lance was still pitching. And going after the leadoff hitter, Arturo Arroyo, to see if we can finish this game off. One-two count to Arroyo. And he grounds out. Oh, looks like he ground out. Five to three. Poor throw by Ferguson. So uh, the second error of the day for Buffalo. And uh, they're still alive in this game right now. We'll go ahead and throw to first. Try to keep them honest. And now go after Jesus Salinas, the number two hitter. And he draws a walk. So we're making things interesting every time we take a big lead here. Runners on first and second now. Rahelio Moreno, the number three hitter up. 1-2 count to Moreno. And he strikes out to end the game. So it wasn't the cleanest game in history. And certainly losing our ace for the next month and a half was not optimal. But it was still a 7-3 victory for the Buffalo Wings here on opening day. As we begin defense of our World Series title. Uh, mentioned uh, we had 13 hits total and a crazy number of doubles. Two by Jamari Habersham, one by Juan Palomo, one by Danny Ferguson, one by Josh Porter, one by Damani Essien, triple by Casares, home run by Casares. As I mentioned, uh, Casares was with all those doubles, uh, a double away from hitting for the cycle in his major league debut. Toselli gets uh, credited with the W in relief. Savonarola, Minelli, and Hale all pick up holds. And not surprisingly, Arturo Casares, player of the game, three for five, two runs scored, two ribbies, and a brilliant debut for the young outfielder. So it's a bummer that uh, we won't see Lance again until late May, uh, but those are the breaks. And we'll find out how the beginning of the season goes for these Buffalo Wings in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.